This is a remake of my previous video with a few improvements. Not only does it have tolerable audio and visuals, but I'm also recording it with a new toaster. It also has some updates due to outdated information in the old vid. Before you watch, just know that I won't cover the basics of how to play, just ways to optimize your play. To my knowledge, most of this info is still not covered in any other guides. Before you get scared and confused, I'm using RuneLight. This is a normal RuneLight plugin that shows me the potential points I will gain by dumping all the logs I have into the fire. The number in parentheses is the points I would gain if every log was fletched before being dumped. It also shows what my character is doing. Idling is obviously bad, but there's actually more to optimization in Winter Todd than just keeping your character from idling. It is by no means necessary. First, we're going to learn how to perfect your movement after lighting the brazier. Quite simply, you want to click the roots just as you get the EXP drop after lighting the brazier. What's important to note is that you can light the brazier after others have already engaged the lighting process. The brazier being lit should never be your cue to click on the roots. The EXP drop is what's important. After a few games, you should have this mastered already. I used to think you could buffer this movement, but upon reviewing my own footage and further testing, I realize now that it was probably just a small amount of lag between sending an input and the RuneScape servers receiving it. So remember to consider your own latency when trying to replicate anything I show you. The next trick is just as simple, hovering. When you're chopping the roots, you should always be hovering the brazier, because that's the next place you're going to go. Being ready for your next action is the simplest thing you can do to maximize your efficiency. Here is where the magic lessons start. While Todd Rogers here is chopping the roots, I'm hovering the brazier. When my inventory is full, I can click the brazier to run to it. But that's not all. I can click on my food to eat while running. But that's not all. I can use my knife on the logs to fletch and eat while running to the brazier. The way this works is as such. Choosing to feed the brazier locks in your location. Once we click to eat, the game overwrites the command to feed the brazier, but keeps the command to walk up to it. You probably already knew that you could eat while running, but you can also fletch while running. Furthermore, eating takes up a certain amount of time, but the eating animation can be overwritten by doing nearly anything in Winter Todd. Chopping roots, repairing and lighting the brazier, and even fletching. This creates a lot of opportunities to eat at the fight while maintaining maximum efficiency. It's also helpful to always align your camera so that you can easily click from the brazier or roots to your inventory. When fletching, you can select your knife, or the last log in your inventory, and hover the other item. That way, if you get hit by the cold, it only takes one click to continue fletching. Now here you are, fletching in front of the flame, not feeding the flame, but fletching in front of it. Once you only have about 10 logs left in your inventory, you will no longer need to hover your knife or logs with the flame instead. Ideally, you will wait until the cold hits you, forcing you to stop. When the cold hits you, click on the brazier to feed ASAP. Sometimes the cold just won't hit you, and you should manually start feeding when you only have about 2 to 4 logs left. But Mr. Minigame Wizard, you might ask. I'm not done fletching my logs. Why should I feed the fire if I still have logs to fletch? Because. Having logs in your inventory allows you to animation cancel. You can animation cancel lighting the brazier after one tick into eating and fletching. Do not wait for your character to finish lighting the flame. Notice how Todd Rogers is fletching when the fire making EXP drop hits and the flame is lit. You only need for your character to initiate the lighting process before you can cancel it via fletching or eating. Or both. That is why we want to have logs handy when we're sitting in front of the brazier feeding the fire. Because if the brazier goes out, then we can relight it with no time penalty. This is also why I was formerly confused about the ability to run away from the lighting process early. I assumed that if you could animation cancel the lighting process by doing anything else, why should movement be any different? But it is different. Don't run away from the flame early, folks. Remember, once you have dumped the last of your kindling to go back to fletching, your character will automatically want to feed logs to the flame, so you must be attentive to resume fletching before your character feeds any of the logs. In fact, when you're low on kindling, you should have your knife selected early and be hovering the uncut wood in your inventory, assuming you have any logs in your inventory left, of course. Here's a little tip, if your knife is pre-selected and you need to do something that doesn't require the knife, just be sure to double click on your next action in order to use the knife and overwrite that command with the new command to carry out the action. When you see that a brazier is about to break, you can walk a square away to avoid the damage. The true efficiency nuts just tank it like a champ. I highly recommend that if you're chopping roots and you see a brazier about to break, you should walk over and get ready to fix the brazier and relight it. Then start fletching whatever roots you already have. The free 50 points and great EXP is more than good enough to justify ending your woodcutting cycle early. 
It is possible to animation cancel, repairing the brazier into fletch and kindling, into relighting the brazier into fletch and kindling. If you're soloing Winter Todd, you can and should employ this trick every time, but you don't have enough time to repair, complete a fletch, and still catch the relight when you're playing on the dedicated server, because other people are going to be relighting the brazier as soon as possible. You can still animation cancel repairing the brazier via eating every time though, since the eating animation is cancelled via the lighting animation. The fletching animation, however, must complete. And now, onto the tips for eating. Winter Todd does damage based on your max HP. As long as you're fast, you can eat between taking any action in Winter Todd, but the best possible time is when you're running back from the brazier to the roots, as your inventory will be empty and you have nothing else to do in that time. If you have very low hit points, chocolate cakes are fantastic, and they allow you to do tons of rounds without banking easily. I would say that sometime higher than 15 hit points is when chocolate cakes become too hard to use, but take that advice with a grain of salt, as I've never done this on a level 11 to 60 hit point account. Wines and Sarah Brews are ideal for higher HP accounts, the latter being obviously much more expensive and harder for Iron Men to get. I formally didn't recommend Sarah Brews in my last guide, but they're a lot less expensive than they used to be, and since vials can be automatically smashed after completing the Bar Crawl mini quest, it seems like a logical choice. Also, I think that overhealing with Sarah Brews allows Winter Todd to hit you harder since it raises your max HP, so maybe don't drink them when you're already at your normal HP cap. My official recommendation is chocolate cake until 15 HP, wines until 60 HP, and Sarah Brews for everything after. Let's talk about healing. Healing is good for the low levels in the crowd. Everyone will love you and be your friend if you heal. You heal by grabbing the concoctions by the door and combining them with herbs you can pick up on either side of the toad. Sadly, you can't heal pyromancers until they knock out, which doesn't happen every round. And if there is another person standing at your brazier who wants to heal, they might get to it before you do. Fortunately, you can keep the rejuvenation potion between rounds when the logs and kindling would otherwise disappear. But you can't leave with them, or pick the herbs in between rounds, meaning that if you want to heal, you have to sacrifice the time in one round, with the hopes of gaining back the last points in another. Mid and high level accounts will have to bank more frequently, and in doing so will lose their rejuvenation potions faster. So you should generally leave healing to the low HP boys. Still, somebody has to do it, so if your corner doesn't have another healer, you might want to try it out. Miscellaneous Tips you actually don't have to start repairing or relaying the brazier on the first tick. Even if everybody else is repairing the brazier on the first tick, you have at least one tick to spare while still being able to get the EXP and points. The EXP and points will be gifted to you a set amount of time after you initiate the relight or repair, even if you're later than everybody else. This means that if you know you're one tick away from fletching a log, you can delay your relight so that you don't just throw the time away you spent trying to fletch the log. I used to recommend raising a cat in my old guide when you're doing this and breaking for a farm run when the kitten grows up. You don't actually risk missing the pet if you don't open your crates immediately, but I think the advice just might be stupid. Trading kittens to citizens in West Arty gets you 100 death runes or 200 if you completed the Arty Easy Diary, which is possibly the easiest achievement diary to complete in the whole game. This translates to a bonus of 25 or 50k GP every 2-3 to three hours. Breaking for a farm run is still a good idea, but 50k just seems like chump change to me now, and that kitten was so annoying. Maybe for Iron Man this is still good advice, so I'm leaving it in, but I don't know. If you have enough food for multiple rounds, and you have 60 agility, go to the north end. You can train agility in between the rounds for admittedly decent EXP per hour. Another note, if you get hit by the cold, you always stop fletching, but your character will still do the fletching animation for a second, despite no longer doing anything. Trust your chat box over your player model. It's also worth mentioning that the rewards you receive aren't decided until you open the supply crate, meaning it's worth it to save the crates in your bank if you plan on training fishing, mining, herb lore, farming, crafting, or woodcutting afterwards. Bonus tip. Asking players why fletch while chopping the roots increases prairie XP yields as other players will die typing to you, and you can bury their bones in between rounds for 4 prairie XP per kill. That's the end of that video. Whoa, look, almost 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm actually surprised I had this much to say, considering my last video was like way shorter and I cut so much from that, but I was mouthing off like a machine gun in it. It's really bad. If you want to subscribe, there's going to be some more content whenever I find something worth uploading. Uh, the only thing I plan to upload is myself taking back the record for the most crates opened at a single time. 
I formerly had the record, but it was taken by Mac H at the start of the year. I waited quite some time to do this, but I was in no position IRL to dedicate the time required to justify running two memberships at a time, and I really wanted a Dragon Hunter CB on my main. I got it a month ago, and now GP is a lot easier to come by. Actually, when I did that last unboxing video, I had like I had a I had a 16 million cash stack. And that was the first time I had that much money in a single time at RuneScape. And you know, I was really just a poor nub who tried really hard to optimize Winter Todd, and I did a pretty good job, I think. Um, I'm really, like, it got 20,000 views. That's, uh, that was one of my most viewed videos on the other channel. And I, I was really proud of what I discovered and the fact that even though it had some pretty bad, uh, like, the audio was kind of terrible, the visuals kind of sucked, um, but you know, people watched it anyway, and it, it got somewhere, not even that many dislikes. <laughs> um, so, thank you, uh, and bye.